Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For any new viewers out there, I'm Wyatt, and I have officially moved into Kansas State as I work on my master's degree in volcanology. Today I'm out exploring the area to see what rocks are around, to see if I can find any fossils or any kind of mineralization that might exist out here in Kansas. As you might be able to tell, I got a road right next to me. I hope it's not too loud for you guys. It's a bit windy too, but I'm also testing out my new sound system, so hopefully it's not too bad for you. But out here in Kansas, most of the rock exposures are going to be near the highways as road cuts, so that's why I'm here. Behind me we got some sedimentary rock. This rock is about 300 to 250 million years old. Now as far as Kansas geology goes, it is completely new to me. For anyone who doesn't know, I am from Idaho. I just moved from Idaho here in Kansas. So I'm pretty familiar with the Western and Idaho geology, but as far as the geology out here, I don't really know. It's kind of like unknown territory. But let's go check out these rock exposures behind me and hopefully we'll find some fossils. The plan is for today, I'm gonna to be doing some driving around until it gets hot. We're having heat wave down here in Kansas. So I don't want to be out in that 102 degree weather today. So I'm just going to be out here for the morning, hitting a couple of road exposures and hopefully we'll find some cool fossils or maybe some cool geology. So let's go take a look at this rock behind me. All right, so this is the first outcrop here. So the state rock of Kansas is limestone. So we got a lot of sedimentary rocks out here in Kansas. And a lot of them are marine rocks from what I've seen online. And the age of these rocks, I believe, is somewhere around 300 to 250 million years old, which I believe puts us in the Permian. So as far as fossils go, we're going to find, or hopefully we'll find some marine fossils. I'm not sure what those marine fossils will be, but maybe there's some uh, trilobites. Now when it comes to sedimentary rocks and sedimentary structures, I know a little bit, but I'm no expert. I prefer metamorphic and igneous. Obviously, I'm going into volcanology, so I like volcanic rocks, igneous rocks. That's usually where you find good crystals, too. You can still find things in sedimentary rock, but it's a little different. And the process to form sedimentary rock, of course, is completely different than igneous rock. But I did have to take a couple sedimentary sed strat classes in college, so I should know a little bit of information. So the rock that we're dealing with here in this outcrop, I can already tell we're dealing with limestone, or dolomite, I believe limestone, and slate, or shales actually, shales. Slate is the metamorphic, first metamorphism of shale. Why limestone, how can I tell? Well, limestone's more resistant. It's a more resistant rock, so it's gonna be a cliff former, while shale is gonna be a slope former because of the way it's structured. It'll fall apart and erodes more easily. So shale will be the slope former while limestone is a cliff former. So you can see those blocks up there, that's likely limestone. And then that slope underneath, that's likely the shales, which used to be basically the muds and fine silt in this environment, a cap of limestone on the top. Now that limestone I mentioned could be dolomite. I'm not sure, but dolomite and limestone are pretty similar. The only difference is, is of course the chemistry. I believe dolomite, has more magnesium. And I believe one way to tell the difference is limestone is gonna react a lot more easily to hydrochloric acid than dolomite. So dolomite might barely fizz or it might not fizz at all if you drop acid on it. While limestone will of course react like crazy. And you'll get a nice foaming reaction. I don't have any acid with me, but I'm gonna assume we have limestone here. So for those who don't know, quick little minor geology lesson. Sedimentary rocks, for the most part, are going to be deposited in water bodies, either lakes or oceans, usually marine environments. And that's because usually of river systems or land processes that are transporting material into these bodies of water. And at these bodies of water, those materials then collect because it's kind of like a sink. And all that material will sink to the bottom and it adds up as layers and you get different layers and different colors depending on the chemistry composition of what that material is. So here, I believe we have some shales, but we have two different colors of shales. We have this gray one, and then we have this really obvious, like oxidized red looking shale here. I believe that shale, or mudstone, crumbles apart really easily. 
And we have the gray stuff right on top here. Similar, but a little different. Here we got this big old block of limestone. And underneath it, some of the shales. And then on top of the limestone, it's capped by more shales. No sign of any fossils to be had here that I can tell. I'm sure there's fossils around, but if there's not a large abundance, I'm not going to spend my time looking for maybe one fossil in this whole deposit. Well, no cool fossils here, just some cool sedimentary rock. I'm going to continue on up this way and go to the spot I initially intended to get to before I made a wrong turn. So let's head that direction. All right. At a new location. Just a really small outcrop here, but out here in Kansas, you kind of have to take any rock exposures you can get out here because it's flat or it's just a big cornfield. Now, while I was looking around before I started filming, I found this on the road. So, who knows where it came from? Where, where is it? Click this. Oh, there it is. See that right above my thumb? That is our first fossil, my first fossil here in Kansas. Probably some kind of brachiopod maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe there's more to be found, hopefully some bigger fossils. Let's get closer, see what we're dealing with here. Looks like more limestone perhaps. I'd say so, something. No sign of any big fossils. Nor is there an abundance of fossils. A little fossil had to come from somewhere, but maybe they're just far and few in this outcrop. Some uh, calcification, some little calcite crystals. It's kind of neat. Coming out of the limestone, so I would assume with calcite, it'd definitely be limestone. Definitely looks different than the other limestone we were looking at earlier. Here's something I didn't expect to find in Kansas some cactus. That's something I'd expect in Montana or Utah, not Kansas. It's starting to get hot. I don't know how much longer I want to be out here. I can feel my legs starting to burn up a little bit too. Not sure what that is. Hey, look at there. That's a little better. That's a nice little fossil. Assuming a brachiopod. That's cool. I found it in this material here where it just suddenly kind of we have a lot of rock and then it softens up right here. So maybe this is the spot to look for fossils. Alright, I think I found the zone for fossils here. So here's the fossil I just found. Looks like a nice little brachiopod. And then we got this chert nodule that's glued in there pretty good. I'll take that. But just over here, let me see if I can find it again. It's pretty noticeable brachiopod. There it is. Right there. I believe these are brachiopods. Hopefully I'm not misidentifying these. Hopefully you can see that. Ooh, that's cool. You can see that structure there. It's all calcified. Or it might be silica, who knows? I think calcium. It's pretty cool right there. So that's its shell, and it's filled with that material there, either limestone or mud, a mixture per perhaps. Hopefully the camera is focusing in on this. Really cool. Our first fossils in Kansas. Yeah, these right here count more as fossils than that little tiny thing. I mean, that was, but my first official fossils of Kansas. So I'm gonna grab my rock camera and uh, my sifter 
use it for gold painting. Gonna use this to collect. I think we found a good spot for fossils here. Here's another one, just sitting right there. I'll put that in there like that. I'm sure there's more just lying around. So this must be the zone for this spot. As you can tell, it's pretty windy today. <laughs> right there, piece of chert, and another fossil. A lot of brachiopods. I believe they're brachiopods. I'll confirm that later. I'm just gonna walk along the edge here, this material. So we got churty limestone. So for this spot, it seems the chert, whenever you start seeing a churty limestone, I'm gonna associate with good fossil location. Even though just down that way was churty limestone and there were no fossils, they're just popping up right here. So that's interesting. But man, it's, it's definitely getting warm out here. There must be a unit that I'm walking on just barely exposed where these fossils are popping up out from. Because I can just pick them up right off the ground. I think people have dug here before. I can definitely see some signs of people messing around here. All right, so I snooped around, I dug around, and it seems that they're coming from this top layer somewhere. It's where most of the ones on the surface I was finding were at. Pretty much seem to have collected them all. They were just in this small zone. They seem to be somewhere up top here. Is that one? Yep, there's one right there. They're just sitting right up top. Is that another one? It is. It's kind of broken. But they're sitting right on top here. And they seem to be rolling just down the slope, and that's where I was finding the rest. So wherever this layer is that they're coming from must just be up below the surface. I used my hammer to kind of dig into the material to see if I could find more. I didn't have any luck with that. And I don't want to spend all day digging around. I'm sure if I really got at it, I could find more, but I mean, how many brachiopod fossils do I need? I only have, yeah, maybe about seven. There's one. I think that might just be a chert nodule. That's kind of interesting, though. Interesting. I'll take that. There's the collection. All right, I'm gonna head out of here and see if I can find any other spots. All right, so I have a new elk crop here. Let's take a look at it. See what we got. I almost drove right past it, but it kind of reminded me of the previous spot I was at with the fossils. Looks like more limestone. Looks like another chert nodule. Oh, that is a fossil. Look at that. That one's cool. It's got some detail there. That's coming with me. That's cool. Again, they're like right on top of this limestone face is where they seem to be. That's where I found just found that one right on top of the shelf and further up. So maybe let's look on top of the soil here, see if there's any just sitting up here. Sure enough, right there, I think. Yep, that's one. It's just a little more eroded. Oh, there's another one right there. I almost missed it. That one's broken. I think I'll just leave that one behind. And I think I'll leave that one behind as well. I got some better ones. I can be picky now. Having issues with my camera, it's getting too hot. Look at that. It's kind of cool. Not quite cool enough to keep. All right, so there's a couple there in these small little outcrops. I'm either gonna go to one more spot or head on out. So if I head on out, this will be it. All right, so back at the office now in my apartment. And here's my finds for today. Not bad for my first fossil hunt here in Kansas. A whole bunch of brachiopods and some big old chert nodules. The detail on these is actually pretty cool, pretty good. You can see all the mud that went inside this shell. I believe this is a brachiopod. Now, I don't know 
if that's the original shell, uh, well, it's not the original shell. Fossils have been completely replaced by minerals or rock, but I'm wondering if that's like the original shell detail and maybe this is some kind of coating over the shell or maybe we're seeing some kind of preserved layering of that shell, I'm not sure. But again, you can see it's full of mud. This one, you can really see that. You can see the sparkle of the calcite. Interesting. I wonder if it is some kind of coating that went over the shell originally, but kept its shape. And that's like the original shell material. I'm not sure. So the thing with brachiopods is they usually have two parts of the shell, but when they die, uh, the bottom part of the shell disconnects from the rest. So it's mostly rare to find them completely intact with their bottom shell. You usually only find the top one. I haven't found any of the bottom shells. I don't know what happened to them. You can find them complete with both shells, but I think it's more rare. All right, guys, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is gonna wrap it up for today. I hope I get more time here soon to do some more fossil hunting. There's some more outcrops around the area as well as in the city I live in for me to explore, and I'm sure there's more fossils to be found. I'm sure there's some cool things to be discovered yet here in Kansas. So again, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and hopefully I can upload another one here soon. So you all take care, and. I'll see you all next time.